all right so again i repeat friends we are on day 45 of uh, 49 days uh, series of enlightenment or no death and uh, today's topic is uh, from cw led better and uh, he says about death gate into a fuller and higher life so before we go into the topic i would like to read about this wonderful master Charles Webster Ledbetter, he was born in 1847 at, and he died in 1934, was a highly developed clairvoyant who unfolded and perfected his psychic faculties under the guidance of his adept teacher. So Ledbetter commenced clairvoyant investigations in the year 1893 on the occasion of collaboration with Annie Besant, the second president of the Theosophical Society. Ledbetter wrote over 30 books on the spiritual life and the psychic nature of the man. So these are the few excerpts from, from his uh, extracts. So he says that get into a fuller and higher life. The subject of life after death is one of great interest to all of us, not only because we ourselves must certainly one day die, but far more because there can scarcely be anyone among us, except perhaps the very young who had not lost by death someone near and dear to us. So if there be any information available with regard to life after death, we are naturally very anxious to have it. The first thing that we must realize about death is that it is a perfectly natural incident in the course of our life that ought to be obvious to us immediately. Because if we believe at all in, in a God who is a loving father, we should know that a fate which, like death, comes to all alike cannot be evil, and that whether we are in this world or the next, we must be equally safe in his hands. This consideration alone should have shown us that death is not something to be dreaded, but simply a necessary step in our evolution. Death is no darksome kind of terrors, no skeleton with his psyche to, to cut short the thread of life, but rather an angel bearing a golden key with which he unlocks for us the door into a fuller and higher life than this. The state of affairs found as actually in ex existing is much more rational than most of the current theories. It is not found that any sudden change takes place in man at death or that he is spirited away to some heaven beyond the stars. On the contrary, man remains after death exactly what he was before it, the same in intellect, the same in his qualities and powers, and the conditions in which he finds himself are those which his own thoughts and desires have already created for him. There is no reward or punishment from outside but only the actual result of what the man himself has done and said and thought while here on earth. In fact, man makes his bed during earth life and afterwards he has to lie on it. This is the first and the most prominent fact that we have not here a strange new life, but a continuation of the present one. We are not separated from the dead, but they are here about us all the time. The only separation is the limitation of our consciousness so that we have lost not our loved ones, but the power to see them. It is quite possible for us to raise our consciousness that we can see them and talk with them as before. And all of us constantly do that, though we only rarely remember it fully. A man may learn to focus his consciousness on his astral body while his physical body is still awake, but that needs special development. And in, in the case of the average man, it would take much time. But during the sleep of this physical body, every man uses his astral vehicle to a greater or lesser extent. And in that way, we are daily with our departed friends. Sometimes we have a partial remembrance of meeting them 
and then we say we dreamt of them more frequently. We have no recollection of such encounters and remain ignorant that they have taken place. Yet it is a definite fact that the ties of affection are still as strong as ever. And so the moment a man is freed from the chains of his physical encasement, he naturally seeks the company of those whom he loves. So that in truth, the only change is that he spends the night with them instead of the day. And he is conscious of them astrally instead of physically. The bringing through of the memory from the astral plane to the physical is another and quite separate consideration, which is in no way affects our consciousness on that other plane, nor our ability to function upon it with perfect ease and freedom. Whether you recollect them or not, they are still living their life close to you. And the only difference is that they have taken off this robe of flesh, which we call the body, that makes no change in them any more than it makes a change in your personality when you remove your overcoat. You are somewhat freer, indeed, because you have less weight to carry. And precisely the same is the case with them. Man's passions, affections, emotions, and intellect are not in the least affected when he dies. But none of these belong to the physical body, which he has laid aside. He has dropped this venture and is living in another. And he is still able to think and to feel just as before. It is very well worth your while to study this subject. But the knowledge of the truth takes away all fear of death. And makes life easier to live because we understand its object and its end. Death brings no suffering, but only joy. But those who live the true, the unselfish life, the old Latin saying is literally true. Mors Genoa Vita. Death is the gate of life. That is exactly what it is. A gate into a fuller and higher life. On the other side of the grave, as well as on this, prevails the great law of divine justice and we trust as implicitly there as here to the action of that law with regard both to ourselves and to those we love. So this is from this book, The Life After Death by C.W. Ledbetter Friends. So this is, uh, we have been hearing about this topic many, many times. So death is not the end. It is just uh, like uh, taking off the overcoat and uh, freeing ourselves. And also this, uh, many people have been saying lately that I'm losing my loved ones, you know, like, uh, so they are not our friends. As uh, C.W. Ledbetter says that, this wonderful man says that they're very close to us. They're watching us. Once we raise up a vibration, we can also talk to them. And we are talking to them in the dream state as well. So. Yes, friends. Yes, Madhvi, please go ahead. Good morning, Madhuram. Good morning, all. Good morning, everyone. It's a wonderful session, Madhu, really. Ah, the, uh, if you can um, give me this book of uh, all the, the, what you're reading, the articles, which they have binded and uh, uh, made us to really realize uh, the enlightenment, real the enlightenment or no death, it's really enlightening, I would say, like, and uh, the whatever you read it, each and every sentence, and the author has written it, it's so true. If I explain my experience today, I think uh, all the listeners or all the people who are here, they will be really uh, correlate how the experiences are with me, which is going on with these books. And, and my other uncle has died yesterday. Mm -hmm. the, uh, my mom's uh, second brother. Mm -hmm. And as you have read it in the book saying that if we are very close and if we love so much, they, they try to connect us, they try to convey us, they try to tell us where they are going and uh, how they are going and all. And that mm -hmm. was absolutely true that like my uncle was also there in like a month before saying that, okay, your mom left, don't be uh, scared or don't be, you don't feel all alone. 
we all are going on the same path. We have to go away. So maybe I'll be following again. So these are the words which way he was saying that. And I said, that, don't, please, you are young and uh, don't go. At least we will have you. And uh, I was like, like almost talking to him, like in a, in a not a physical form, but in a, uh, in a spiritual way or in a, in a other way, like, you know, and uh, I, it's for me, I would never understand what they are all actually. But now today I really could understand because I could see my awareness and the consciousness and the, and the way it is like uh, really the each and every word, what you have read it, it's absolutely true. Yes, like uh, I agree with you and uh, I have to really hell today and uh, cry like hell, I should say, because none of the family members are there now. All my like elders, I would say, and I was a very, very pet for them, actually. And obviously for me also, they were the really, you know, the, like a shelters they were like mm -hmm. us, for us. Mm -hmm. But when you lose them, uh, it's, it's very hard. But for me, it's like I could be able to talk now, like I could be able to That's share great. my experience now because I know already and I've seen them. And now I understand more and more about these journeys and I understand all about the uh, insights. And really, thank you so much. I like, and uh, yeah, thank you all for really listening to me. Uh, I'm, um, I'm so happy, happy Madhvi. Of, really? Uh, you know, like uh, the, the way, the strength that you're carrying and you're coming here and sharing this, having uh, lately the many incidents happening in your life, but you, this proves your strength, this proves your understanding that, um, that what, uh, what you have understood all these days you know like it got imprinted in you so very happy for that as as you know that they are not far they are very close to us even your mother or your both uncles they are just there they're just watching over you and um, and uh, good that you did not uh, you did not grieve much because we know that one day we have to replicate as well and uh, they are in the in the safe place they are in a better place resting peacefully Yes, thank you so much, Madhuram. That's a really a pleasure to have this groups so like how they are really giving us the knowledge to understand the things in a right way, actually, mm -hmm. not to grieve and not to really have pain. Because when we understand what we are and what the uh, what is meant or how it is going and how it what is happening around us, then I think the life would be so easy and so mm -hmm. really I am I'm, I'm really glad that I met you all and. Really, I, it's it's giving me so much energy and strength. If not, I would have gone so down. I think I would have almost like, you know, to sit in the corner the whole day and uh, do nothing or, or just think that I lost so many people. And I, yeah. I, what do I do? Like kind of a thing. But instead of that, what can I do? Like really? And because they are not gone anywhere. They're just there. Yeah. Only thing is I need to feel it. That's it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you made that feel and uh, to make me understand. Really, I'm so thank and thankful for yeah. to you and the whole uh, group. And uh, I really pray to my uncle now. And I think today is the funeral and I want to just mm -hmm. share with everyone, please meditate and be aware and uh, just spread everything so that the, uh, the loud ones are not really getting really, really painful. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's the thing I want to say. Yeah, thank you, Matthew. Okay, then. thank you. Yeah, thank sure. you. Bye bye. Yeah. So, yes, friends, the real enlightenment is understanding that there is no death. When we really understand that there is no death, we actually live life so beautifully. So, yes, yes, Punita, please go ahead. Hi, Maru. Beautiful yeah. article. I really like the line that you said, the sentence, we make the bed. And uh, mm. like, you know, we are supposed to. So, yeah, I don't remember the whole thing. But, yeah, it was very nicely said. That yes, yes. You, you, uh, you, you know, prepare the bed. Bed. And you have plane, to just On this lie earth plane, on, on this physical plane. And when you go to the other worlds, you lie on it. Lie on that, that means, yeah. That means you carry all the thoughts, whatever is there, you know, like for some time, at least it will be, it will be, you will be lying on that bed. Yeah, and it's so very much so like whatever you do down here, of course, it's going to affect there and the few other lives that we are going to have. 
Mm. Uh, that was nice. And I just, uh, I don't know if it's a very apt question or if it's a very weird, but I was just talking to my husband about all this and he just happened to ask me, where does the soul reside in our body? So then it made me also think, yeah, mm. like whether it is in our heart or uh, the chakras that some say it is on the forehead, like you know, midpoint or something. So then mm. I was just wondering, yeah, I should ask where exactly does the soul reside in our body? Because it is said mm. that when a person uh, leaves or vacates the body, the soul comes out from one of the openings of a body. Mm. Like, you know, sometimes it is from the mouth or if the eyes are op- left open. So they say the soul has come out from the eyes. I don't know how true it is. Mm. So I thought I'll just uh, like you know, ask that where exactly, because as soon as the heart stops, uh, it is said that the like you know the soul has vacated the body. So mm. is it that mm. the soul resides in the heart, or is it in the mind, or mm. one of the chakras? <laughs> in my understanding, uh, Punita, the the soul is uh, is in the heart. You know that's uh, uh, mm-hmm. that's where it resides. That's where we right. say, you know, connect to your heart, connect to yourself. You know, mm-hmm. stay with your heart, don't go with the mind. So that means connect to your heart, means connect to your soul. Okay. All right. So I don't know about this part that <laughs> you know, leaving the yeah. heart or uh, in the mouth. No, I, I've never. Um, yeah, I've no. just heard and like, you know, heard our, and, I mean, I was just saying that. That it is supposed. I don't know how to. I mean, I don't know. So I thought because then when you say you have to connect to yourself, you are meditating and constant. Like you know, you're calming down your brain. Mm. So that is how we say we will be connecting to our soul, mm. like you know, our inner self. That's true. So yeah. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Panetta. Yes, yes, friends. If somebody have to say something about this, be really happy to learn. What is your understanding? That's really a good question Punita had asked. Yes, Sharu, please go ahead, Sharu. Good morning to all good of morning. you. Beautiful article. And uh, Madhvi ji, all your uh, family members are just now in the cradle of uh, a beautiful cradle where they are um, happy. And so don't worry about that. And if if at all you feel grief, please let that thing out also. You don't have to show everybody that you are strong and you can manage everything. You don't have to show anything to anybody. That is okay. You have to go through that process of grief. And yes, to the question uh, Punita ji said, it's a beautiful question. We should ask Patri sir also this question. But as far as my understanding goes, I think the soul is all expansive. And soul is formless. Mm. So, you know, it can, on one hand, it can be in every part of our body. It can take that shape. It can take that form in every part of the body. It can be there in everywhere, wherever we are. And uh, on the other hand, it can just take a small corner, you know, like uh, Madhu Vugaru said that, you know, it resides in the heart. So, you know, it can just take that uh, beautiful corner and just sit there so uh, yes so i i think the fo- uh, soul is all pervasive uh, so it is everywhere so it can take all the shapes and the forms inside of us and it can be wherever it wants to go so that is my understanding i think patrisa would be uh, a better person to answer the qu- question so yeah so thank you thank, thank you. you so much thank you Sharu. Thank, <laughs> thank you yes punita please note this question and uh, don't yes. not forget to ask the teacher on 30th yeah yes yeah. yeah thank you mm-hmm. thank you thank you so much Sharu. no i won't keep my uh, because by mom's birthday only i bursted out like anything even on the platform i'm not trying to hold myself uh, i mean i was pet for them but i was not so close to my uncles i was very close to my parents only and we were all uh, in transfers actually so i was not able to be so close or spend so much time with my uncles so i will bust out yeah you're right i i will never uh, show anyone or i don't want to pretend like as if i'm not uh, trying to hold my grief or pain you know I'll just hell off just for my mom's birthday you could see that I was like literally crying and yes you're right to make it but the the journey I understood the journey because when they were saying me like we are leaving 
and uh, like as uh, just now madhu madhu also read this uh, statement we are preparing our bed so that means they really prepared their beds and they prepared their journey and they are trying to like tell to the people or the loved ones before they are leaving so i try to understand them it was so much pain from past one month because whenever i get these dreams or whenever i get these calls i i cry like anything but now i'm i'm trying to understand them how best they are going and how nicely they have lived their lives and i'm trying to understand that and and thank you so much i will not hold myself i will <laughs> take you all your advices really i will never hold anything i they were i was the pet for them but i am not so close to them to really grieve or like really have so much pain i was very close to my parents only like my mm-hmm. mom and dad i would say and thank you so much yeah thank, thank you. you thank, thank you. you thank you yes sir pata yes thank you so much ka for the meditation session and um, for the question asked by punita ji uh actually i didn't experience it personally but according to what i read in uh, some tamil uh, scriptures what they used to say is our soul is located uh, like in the center uh, mm-hmm. our forehead like uh, center of our forehead and in the middle to our head uh, but actually the size of our soul is compared to like for example if we take a hair a single hair from the mm-hmm. elephant and if we cut it into 100 parts and mm-hmm. then let's take the uh, single part in mm-hmm. and then after we have to cut the single part into 1000 mm-hmm. finally the the size of the what we will obtain after cutting it 1000 the single one this, that is what the size of our soul according mm-hmm. to uh, tirumuler who written tirumandiram actually tirumuler is a saint uh, he uh, he lived for more than 3000 years so each year he will write one uh, song uh, mm-hmm. that's how we got tirumandiram so in tirumandiram we have 3000 uh, songs so each songs will say about our life so mm-hmm. when we have tiru bit in front of something it means which is directly given by god mm-hmm. so, but this is what they are saying the saints uh, but uh, me personally i didn't experience it but i think the answer from patriji i guess it, that it, we have to meditate by meditating we will understand where is our soul is and uh, how what we are and we can understand everything and uh, mm-hmm. yes that is what is from our my experience and the recent saint uh, who lived in the year 1870s his mm-hmm. name and he said this uh, one like our soul is in in between our forehead mm-hmm. the same. and then uh, like located uh, when we draw a line uh, from our forehead and the, from the center of our head that is where the uh, soul is located and uh, if we uh, if we able to visualize it there where shiva is dancing like nadraja you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, dancing in like nadraja position uh, in posture and um, where we can see the light the light is not uh, it is not um, is not like light, light, light that is that is like coming from sun which burns it burns it uh, burns it but uh, it is a cold light mm-hmm. it has a more thousand times more than uh, the power of the sunlight mm-hmm. so in order to have the experience of it we have to improve ourselves to that point so that we can manage the effect of it wow. that's what we have to meditate 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 mm, thank that's you so it. much thank you thank you yeah, thank you so much and the first yes we will surely put this question to patrice sir 
Yes. Anybody else, friends? Anybody else wants to share anything? Hi, Mother. Good morning. Hi, Shashank. Hi. Hi. Hello, everyone. Good morning. And uh, Madhaviji, may, may his soul have a great transition into the higher worlds. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, as other masters already shared, it's very interesting to see different, um, yeah, different views and di different ways of how, how this, uh, the location of the soul. But um, I just want to add one more point because mm -hmm. C.W. Ledbetter is also my favorite author. And um, one of his books was um, Astral Plane and its Inhabitants. It, he really goes in detail about, or, or like, uh, yeah, about, about the inhabitants of, the, of this plane and how many types of, um, let's say, entities or people <laughs> are around. And um, one of his students, a author E. Powell, he describes in detail about not, not only the soul, but man and his bodies. And he describes that we are not only just the physical body, but you're, you all know by, by, by this time, but also the etheric body, the mental body, the causal body and the supra-causal body. And then it's like a shit, uh, like a, or like, like an egg with different layers and one body surrounding the other. And once, once the, uh, the so-called death happens, just the physical shit is removed, but it, the, it's not just the soul, but it's covered in these different, different layers. First the etheric body and once, um, or let's say like after a few days after the death, even the etheric body will be just uh, disintegrated into the etheric plane. And then it goes um, into the, uh, let's say, yeah, mental okay. plane. Okay. Yeah. So like he, he wrote, or he, let's say he combined all the works of great theosophical masters and he wrote each and every book on one, one um, body. So he, you can find his books on the astral plane, the um, like and the mental plane, supracausal plane. So yeah, it's like it's like an ocean. But as I said, uh, it would be great to know Patriji's answer on this. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kishan. Thank you. Wonderful information. Yes, Indraji. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. This is, a, this is a very lovely subject, and thank you. You are always bringing very, very interesting and lovely subjects to us, and even elevating us to a higher level. Thank you for that, Mother G. And um, yes, where is our soul? I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but perhaps we could look at it from two angles. One is from a spiritual side, and the other as inquisitive, uh, logical human beings from a, the side of a quantum theory, right? From the spiritual side, I think, where is our soul? The honest answer is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Why do we meditate to go inside? Where do you go inside? You go to your soul. Mm -hmm. So when you meditate and attain the mukti, the, the highest state of meditation, then you are going to your soul, and that's when you will know where your soul is. Mm. It's, 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 it's just my simple, ordinary thinking. And mm. from the quantum, from the side of a science, the quantum theory, we, we have been studying the structure of the atom. We said uh, atom was the smallest indivisible particle at the beginning. The scientists, the logical minds said that. Mm -hmm. And then they said, no, there are even smaller particles than the atom, the nucleus, and then the electrons, nucleus having the protons and the neutrons, and then the electrons going elliptically round and round in the nucleus. 
And then comes the quantum theory, which even complicates life even more or simplifies it more and says, matter and energy are never in one state at one place at any time. We do not know where they are at any time. We can only know the probability of where it is. And perhaps if you extend that, the soul is also like that. It's never in one place. We will never know the form or shape or where it is at what time. We can mm. only perhaps know just it is there are some arenas, that's all. I don't know if I explained myself clearly. Very well. Yes. It's yes. a hazy thought that's going in my mind. Yes, Indraj, you have said it uh, said it well from both perspectives. Yes. So, yes, we will wait for Patriji's answer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Ram, you want to say something? Okay, Arputa, uh, Ram is asking, uh, Ram is asking, uh, for you to share uh, this poem or the song from this wonderful master that you have mentioned every week. Ah, every, week. <laughs> every week when you uh, join the sessions, you know, like I know you join every day, but weekly ones, if you could just uh, enlighten us with those those songs, that will be really great. Essence of it. Sure, I will. It should. <laughs> Because it is again a learning. Because all these three thousand songs of uh, of uh, life, so we will we will really get to know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arpata, and thank you so much, Indrajri. Yeah. Yes. So, friends, uh, today evening uh, we will be having a three hours meditation because of the Buddha Purnima, the full moon. So it will be starting at, uh, instead of 6 o'clock, 6 p.m., we will be starting at 5.30 p.m., wherein we will be having a three, sir, like a live, a live from Pyramid Valley. So we will all meditate with his uh, flute music and uh, other masters playing their wonderful instruments. So let us all utilize this opportunity. You know, this is a huge milestone for each one of us because uh, to meditate for three hours. And if we meditate in a group, that will be much easier because the three hours will pass like 30 minutes. So join us and uh, experience this full moon energies and uh, it will be really wonderful to, to raise our vibrations when we are collectively meditating. Yeah, that's one thing, friends. And for tomorrow, there is a... Um, there's an again a wonderful topic that there is no death by Alice A. Bailey. So it is again uh, each day we are knowing the same thing, but uh, but from different masters' uh, perspectives. And uh, yes, friends. So we will all see each other again in the evening. Till then, have a lovely day, and keep smiling, keep meditating, and uh, enjoy life, friends. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.